Red Hood. Dawn of DC is a comic book storyline that centers around Jason Todd. The former Robin turned anti-hero known as Red Hood within the new Dawn of DC initiative. In this series, Jason finds himself at a critical turning point in his journey, dealing with the complexities of his moral code and his relationship with Gotham. He tries to reconcile his violent methods with his desire to do good, often finding himself at odds with the traditional heroes, especially Batman. The story explores Jason's struggle to leave his past behind, his attempts at redemption, and how he confronts new villains in Gotham while facing personal demons. It also focuses on his relationships with other members of the Bat family, particularly his contentious dynamic with Bruce Wayne and his evolving partnership with characters like Nightwing and Batgirl. Dawn of DC places Red Hood into fresh situations, challenging his identity as a vigilante in Gotham's dark alleys and introducing him to new allies and enemies as the DC universe reshapes itself. The arc emphasizes Jason's internal conflict, whether he can ever truly become a hero, or if his past forever dooms him to be an outsider in the Bat family. Overall, Red Hood, Dawn of DC portrays a raw and gripping character study of Jason Todd, dealing with themes of redemption, loyalty, and the blurred line between justice and revenge. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're taking a closer look at the fresh iteration of my all-time favorite Bat Family character, Jason Todd, also known as Red Hood. Now, I've always been partial to the New 52 Red Hood, which has been my top pick so far. But who knows? Maybe this new take will change my mind. So, let's jump right in and see if this latest version can earn that number one spot. Alright, let's get right into it. I've got to start with my biggest gripe about this figure. They really should have given Red Hood a wired sub goods hood. Just like the one on the Page Puncher Damian Wayne figure, it would have had so much more versatility and definitely upped the fun factor. Plus, if you take a good look at the head sculpt without the hood, it's actually got some incredible detail and paintwork. It's such a shame to keep all that amazing detail hidden under this hard plastic hood which really limits the figure's potential. Going into the items that comes with him out of the box, he comes with a standard McFarlane art card with a short biography at the back, standard McFarlane base or stand, and then Aside from these two close fists, he also comes with two alternate weapon holding hands. As for the weapons, he comes with a sword and a crowbar, which you can easily put on this clip looking thing on his back. Which, to be honest, this is one of the things that McFarlane does that. Again, I, I don't really like. Why don't they put like a complete uh, sword sheet over there? Or, you know, something that is actually more realistic so the, to hang your weapon at your back? Because these are literally just, again, two clips at the back, which is not realistic. My first impression when I saw this figure is that it's like a darker version of the this one, the Arkham Knight uh, Red Hood costume, which is which I guess I can say is my second favorite look. But my problem with this one is that I think it was actually too light for Red Hood's character, and I'm thinking it's because they used this gray portion, so. Using black and red only on this uh, Dawn of DC version, I guess, fixes that 
fixes that issue for me because when I think Red Hood, I think dark and gritty. So I think this is a better, better version as far as the color that they choose. All right, let's take a closer look at the costume design, starting with the torso. This version of Red Hood sports a black t-shirt under a sleeveless jacket. The t-shirt has a logo on it, which I think is supposed to be a bat symbol, but honestly, it looks more like his Red Hood helmet, with those shapes resembling eyes. The sleeveless jacket itself is a mix of red and black, and when you do a full 360 spin, the red areas almost look like they form a bat symbol, which is a pretty cool touch. Now, moving on to the arms. He's got red cloth bandages instead of the usual gauntlets. I think it looks good stylistically, but it's definitely a downgrade in terms of practicality for battle. Still, it gives him a unique look. Next, we've got the brown belt with a silver buckle. The paintwork here is solid, but what bugs me is the extra portion of the pants above the belt. Did they forget to trim that in the final design? It doesn't look great, and honestly, I might end up cutting it myself just to clean up the overall silhouette. I do like the color choice for the pants and the black boots. They create a nice color separation that makes the design pop a bit more. And those subtle two red lines on the side are a nice little detail. On top of all that, McFarlane's signature sculpted detail and texture really shine through here, giving the figure that detailed premium finish that make it stand out. Moving on to articulation. Now the head is obviously limited by this hard plastic which they use for the hood. So let's move on to the arms. So the arms can do that and then that. And then there's this bicep cut, double jointed elbow, and then double peg wrist. He has a bicep cut and a waist rotation, which together he actually has a pretty de pretty decent range bending forward and also bending backward side to side i bet if i clean that up the articulations range will increase now for the leg you can do kick that far you can kick backward that far you can do the bend dam and since there will be a Red Hood cycle that will be coming out separately. McParlane usually add this tie cut for their figure that rides motorcycle or horses. So that's a good addition for articulation. Then double jointed knee. There's no articulation here, despite the fact that that would have been a very good place to add an articulation. Then for the ankle, you can do that. Then toe articulation and ankle pivot. So overall, typical McPerlane articulation with the added bonus of that tie cut. All right. It's time for the final verdict on this Red Hood figure. Overall, there are a lot of things I genuinely love about it. The sculpting and attention to detail are top-notch, which is exactly what we've come to expect from McParlane.
the paintwork, especially on the head sculpt and the small accent throughout, really brings the character to light. The costume design, while different, has uh, some unique elements that make this version stand out. However, there are definitely some drawbacks. The biggest miss for me is the hard plastic hood. It just doesn't offer the same versatility or dynamic posing that a wired soft goods hood would have. And that awkward extra bit of the pants above the belt feels like a design oversight. So is it better than my all-time favorite New 52 Red Hood? I'd say it's close but not quite there. It does enough right to make it a strong addition to the collection, but there are just a few too many small issues for it to take the crown. If you're a Red Hood fan, this is still a great pickup, but keep in mind those minor quirks. For me, it's a good figure that could have been great with just a few adjustments.